Are there unicorns in the Bible? Yes. Are there unicorns in the world? Yes. And if you just laughed at me, you're going to need to repent in 20 seconds. It's time for Wretched. Yeah. Are you actually a superhero? I actually am a superhero, yeah. Don't turn that channel. Am I wrong? No. Do you think I'm right? No. Being ridiculous isn't easy. Talk about change. I'm Anderson Cooper. Ah, that's a lie. I'd be wearing a small t-shirt and pushing my biceps out. Why are you doing this? To hassle people. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Peter Brady here. <laughs> Welcome to Wretched. My name is Todd Friel. I am your host. The Wretch, the song refers to here, dear Christian, is a question you can ask your Bible. Why exactly do you, a dear Bible, talk about unicorns? Why does the Bible mention unicorns? If you look up the word unicorn in the Webster's New World Dictionary, it says that unicorn is a mythical horse-like animal with a single horn growing from its forehead. This is a depiction of a unicorn. This animal is mythical. It's fictional. It's make-believe. It's not real. There's none of these alive today, and no scientist has ever found a fossil of one, and yet unicorns are mentioned in the Bible nine times in the books of Numbers, Deuteronomy, Job, Psalms, and Isaiah. And so because of this, people like to scoff at the Bible and say things like this. So, now, if you believe in God, you believe in unicorns. Which is fantastic. If we're going to use the Bible for science, we've got some tough things to explain. What are you going, what are you going to do about uh, unicorns? Or mentioned eight times in the Bible. I want to tell you what, we have never found a fossil of a unicorn. By the way... Where are the unicorns that are referred to in the Bible? Where, where are those, either in the fossil record or today? I'd like to see one of those. Another one of those interesting tests that continues to get failed. Well, if you get an old 1828 Noah Webster's Dictionary, which is the very first edition dictionary that Webster came out with about 200 years ago, and if you look up the word unicorn, it says that unicorn is an animal with one horn, the monoceros. This name is often applied to the rhinoceros. Notice how this definition says absolutely nothing about a horse. It says nothing about a horse-like animal or a mythical animal or a fictitious creature. It says absolutely nothing about Greek mythology whatsoever, but rather it says that this is a name that is often applied to the rhinoceros. Wait a minute. What? The rhinoceros? You mean this is a unicorn? But the rhinoceros has two horns. How could this be a unicorn? Well, if you look up the word rhinoceros in the same dictionary, it says that rhinoceros is a genus of quadrupeds of two species, one of which, the unicorn, has a single horn growing almost erect from the nose. This animal, when full grown, is said to be 12 feet in length. There's another species with two horns, the bicornis. They are natives of Asia and of Africa. According to Noah Webster, back in the early 1800s, it was understood that there were two species of the rhinoceros. The one-horned species was called unicorn, and then the two-horned species was called bicornis. So basically, you get a 200-year-old Noah Webster's Dictionary and look up the word unicorn, it says rhinoceros, then look up the word rhinoceros, and it says unicorn. That was just 200 years ago. The Old King James was translated 400 years ago, in 1611. So if the definition of the word unicorn has changed in just the past 200 years from rhinoceros to horse, then it doesn't make much sense to take a modern definition of the word unicorn and apply it to a 400-year-old translation of the Bible. That's illogical. As a matter of fact, even today, the scientific name of the Asian one-horned rhinoceros is Rhinoceros unicornis, and Deceros bicornis is the scientific name of a two-horned rhinoceros. Well, where do you think those scientific names came from? Hmm, I wonder. Well, they came from the Latin. Unicornis and bicornis are Latin words. Well, that's interesting, because in Psalm 92, verse 10, the psalmist is praying and says, But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. If you look up this verse in the Latin Bible, the word that's being used here is the word unicornis. Unicornis is the same Latin word that's being used in the scientific name of the Asian one-horned rhinoceros. In Job 39, verse 9, God is speaking to Job and says, Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? If you look up this verse in the Latin Bible, the word that's being used here is the word rhinoceros. Rhinoceros is the Latin word that's being used in this scripture verse. Interesting. Rhinoceros unicornis. Rhinoceros unicornis. 
As a matter of fact, in these nine scripture verses, there's actually five different Latin words that are being used. Rhinoceros, rhinoceratis, rhinocerata, unicornium, and unicornis. These five Latin words are what's being used when the Old King James Version of the Bible says unicorn. Take all the time you need to repent if you were snickering at the idea of unicorns being in the Bible. Okay, I can't help myself. Do you remember the fellows who were sitting in their university setting pontificating, unicorns in the Bible, how ridiculous. And clearly, they don't have a clue what they were talking about. A dude on YouTube put that together and basically revealed they simply don't have a clue. Now that we've resolved